You are not who you appear to be. This is the great legend, and I'm coming at you live, man. This is amazing. Two days in a row? Damn. Man, I usually don't do two days in a row when I do a live show, if y'all didn't know. Now you do, but we're going to have a lot of fun, says me and says you. So let's get into this bad boy. Let's talk a little bit about yesterday's mishap when we had a kick-ass video. It was called Mega Golden Age Comic Book Haul. Plus more, you know, I was going to show this kick-ass Golden Age book. But sadly, when I opened the box, we had a different look, if you know what I mean. <laughs> if you know what I mean, the rhymes are clean. Sunday mornings, man. We had a Jonah X number one, 9.8. So, that was pretty cool. Let me get my chat stuff going on real quick here, everybody. We want to check our chat, so we know that's where it's at. Let's see here, people. Checking that chat. Checking that chat and finding out where it's at. All right. Here it is. There's the chat. Baka! We got Chris Barrett, the Cosmic King, has arrived on the scene. He's bringing the heat, if you know what I mean. He is lean, mean, and he is one blue wrench modern machine. Coming at us live from the chat. He says, Barrett 316 says, the Cosmic King just hit the chat. Man, he hit it like a damn steel chair out of freaking nowhere. Man, you better take a pill because you're going to taste that steel of that chair. So, man, you better watch your derriere because he's going to whip your ass from one end of the spectrum to the other. So saith the Cosmic King. Cosmic King, so saith. If you know what I mean, we're here live. All right, I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. You know, 
crazy ass neighbors was firing them firecrackers off. They was going crazy. We just stayed on. We didn't even really watch any fireworks or anything like that. Legends lived a long life. I seen it all, done it all. I didn't have to see none of that. We got Louis Pagon Ponce. Legend, I hope all is well. I would love for you to beta raid the comic series I'm working on, which I know you will enjoy, a genre that is right up your alley. Please let me know so I can get to you. Chris Barrett says, so when is World Class Championship Wrestling coming back, Legend? Dude, man, you, you're going to get me started on a wrestling deal when I need to show comics, but every freaking, like, it came on, like, Sunday morning, I think, and then either Friday evening or Saturday evening on our local stations here in the DFW area. Man, it's good shit, man. It was, like, better than WWE or WWF at the time because they would mic the ring. They would put the cameraman right on, like, the you know, right by the ring itself. You weren't looking at the hard cam all the time, you know, like the old days. So they were really uh, first of their time. They, they had a great production. I was in, Okay, Lewis says, I was inspired to create a truth-telling series in a comic book format, which is exactly what is missing in this day and age. Hey, man, ain't that the truth, man? You know, Legends Truth, we talk truth on there every now and then. Grant Morrison has a lot of Easter eggs where he talks truth as well. You know, we're all truth seekers. One way or the other, from sister to brother, mother to father, man, we're here for the slaughter. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of anything except that. All right, but Lewis and Chris are giving some love. You know, Lewis Pagan Ponce, I would really love to read your uh, comic, your beta uh, story, this thing you're trying to tell. So hit me up uh, right here, facebook.com forward slash The Great Legend Show. You should be able to send me a message there. Twitter, you can follow me and send me a direct message on there. I also have Instagram at ArtAudi95, but I don't have it on my bottom, um, you know, what is this? Links or whatnot. But that's all right. Hey, you know what? We're going to go ahead and get started. Chris, I know this was insane yesterday. This was the book. Now, I did put it in Mylar, though. I mean, it is Jonah Hex 9.8. Beautiful. Way better than my copy that I have that's raw. I think I'd probably have a, in the current state, it's probably a 4.0. I need to get it pressed, cleaned, maybe even one of those little humidifiers because it's kind of kind of got some waves to it. So Now, this box is insane. I had to go back in the brain. Actually, I didn't. I went to mycomicshop.com. I found the book I was looking for, man. And, you know, this one here, this wasn't the golden age you were looking for because the thing is, this is 1977. This is Bronze Age. So I found what I was looking for. And the box is humongous. Oh, my God. It's pretty heavy, too. I mean, does that take up the whole screen or what? Well, let's hide the address. I don't want none of that stuff happening. All right, so let's go ahead and open this up. Now, like I said, we're going to show everything in this box. Got the old trusty Winchester. Also, representing Shazam today. Captain Marvel. The OG Captain Marvel. The original Captain Marvel. Where's my manners? Always cut away from yourself. I learned that back in the day from some of the originals on YouTube. You know, let me give a big shout-out real quick to my main man, Mr. Gretzky. 6699 or 9966. He's a huge fan of Mr. Gretzky. Of course, Gretzky, one of the greatest of all time. He was on Robert Galvin's show last night. Dude, I hope I didn't chip any chip anything digging that knife in. Good. They always keep the top protected, which I like. I'm going to go ahead and leave my knife out there. How do you miss a box? like? I know, dude. This one was in the pile of boxes. And I didn't know that the grading, the graded Golden Age book, I had them piggyback it onto my normal subscription shipment. You know, I do my subscription from them once a month. Most of y'all young fellers call that a pull list. But when you do it by mail, it's a subscription service. Of course, we got... Oh, wow. Dude, that is so cool. We got bunk holes! <laughs> Holy shit. 
I knew I was going to order some of these. I'm still missing some. And these are the first time I'm actually unboxing these. Damn, dude. I ought to save these for their own video, though. What do you think in the chat? Do you think I ought to show these? I, I'll, I'll go ahead and show them in a separate... I'll, I'll show them right now. I'm going to show them right now. Fans want to see some Funko Pops. I haven't showed Funkos in a long time. I told Mr. Uh, Gretzky a, a one time, and he knows this because he's watched me. Gretzky celebrating yesterday evening or maybe today after midnight it was when he was on Robert Galvin's late night show. Ten years. Mr. Gretzky, 9966. Ten years on the tube. I've known him for ten years. I've known him for as long as he's been around in our comic book community. One of the coolest, greatest guys. And I don't do guests on the Great Legend Show because... I just don't. I don't want to pay the StreamYard crap. And then my OBS, uh, I have an older AMD computer. And I can't get the NDI plug-in. It's not compatible. So I couldn't Skype call you in. That would be really cool because it works great. It worked great on the uh, Microsoft Surface. But the problem is the Surface's processor is just too damn slow. You know. But let's go ahead and get started with some funk hose. All right, let's try to un unwrap a little bit more here. Yeah, there was some of this series that I was missing, or that I'm missing. Let's go ahead and show the first one, and you can guess what the series is. How about that? Damn, dude. Mole Man! Not News, Dan. It's Mole Man! Boy, they boxed it up nice. I want to put these in um, those Funko Pop stacks, those nice acrylic containers. Of course, this guy made his first appearance in Fantastic Four, number one, 19, November of 1961. Let's go with another villain, shall we? You'll see this villain. Actually, Mole Man is, you can't really see him, but he's right here. Um, and then there's that little thing, a uh, statue right there. And I actually have an Invisible Woman, a Human Torch, and a Reed Richards Mr. Fantastic. And they each come with a piece of Mole Man's big-ass monster from, you know, issue number one. And it's like one of those dioramas. You put all the statue pieces together and it forms a humongous, freaking epic scene from that original Fantastic Four number one cover. I will show that one of these days. I just need the room, you know. Now, this is a cool Funko. This is a big-ass headed Funko, too. Look at that one. Super scroll. Look at that. He's got a fire, stretchy arm. The other arm that's kind of behind his uh, head here, that's, of course, the thing arm. Um, oh, and he, his leg is invisible. I don't know if y'all can see that damn glare though yeah see see his not that leg but the other legs invisible very cool funko you know when i saw these funkos and i, and I knew they were going to be released i just had to get them i mean i told mr gretzky i probably told chris barrett as well i don't need any more funkos i have too many but there's some funkos i want to get rid of eventually so next up they In the old school 1960s cartoon, after about one season, I believe, they replaced the Human Torches character with this guy. Herbie. And I'm sorry, I do not remember what Herbie's, um, what that stands for. I don't read a lot of Herbie. He's just kind of an afterthought when they show him. So Herbie there, very cool. He comes on a little uh, stand, you know, an invisible stand, so it makes it look like he's floating, kind of like he did in the comic books. I'm going to stack him on Elmo over there, because Elmo's not going anywhere. Now, let's get to the bread and the butter. There he is, Mr. Fantastic. Read Richards. Now, there may be an other version of this one, and I think I've got it in another box that's not opened. I think it's in this Marvel 
I got a Marvel Collector Core box. It's supposed to have a t-shirt in there. And it's supposed to have a Human Torch alternate and a Mr. Fantastic alternate. Very cool. Let's check the chat. Little Crunchy. How did I miss a box like that? Yeah. I know that rule of always cut away from yourself. Yep. Feels weird to me. Show them separate. Oh, you okay, so Barrett wanted to show these several. I think Barrett wants to get that golden age. Did you get that huge funky of the thing? Funky of the Oh yeah, yeah, I did. That's in a box. I don't know where that is. That's that big ass ten inch one. I did get that one. I don't know where it is though. I've I've got um these kind of cases for those. I don't know if they make the acrylics, but I've got these. They're like um that style case, which is very nice. That's a uh, Funko 2015 1008 pieces. Kind of high in my, my honest opinion. I've got a Ben Grimm limited to 250 pieces. The metallic thing from one of the Comic Cons. That's the big, that's the big boy. And I also have Big Bird flocked in a big 10 inch as well. All right, let's go to one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful. Invisible girl. I like how they call her invisible girl. Going all old school with it. Costume choice is great. They're that OG Fantastic Four costume choice. Very cool figure. Got some shield, um, a, a shield around her fist like she's ready to just throw down. Very kick-ass. I don't know if they have a chase of this one, but they should have made like a totally clear one for her. That would have been freaking awesome. All right, we're going to put you next to Reed, your future husband. Johnny! Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Now, I do have a Chase one of these, like I said, in that box over there. I also have a Ben Grimm where he's wearing the trench coat. God, they really pack these nice. I, I love ordering Funkos from um, my comic shop because... They're, they knock, They put a big-ass discount on them. They used to do 35% on the Funkos. I don't know what they are now, but that's how I was able to get all the original He-Man Funkos. Of course, I sold them for like 700 bucks. The Rocky ones sold for about 700 bucks. So, I mean, when Funkos sell for that high, it's a no-brainer. Get rid of them, man. Sell them. Save room. Wow, look at this feller. That's a beautiful Funko. He looks a lot better than his original uh, Funko, where the original had the black eyes, then the other one had, I think, uh, blue eyes. I've got the metallic blue-eyed one. But that's a beautiful freaking Funko there. So, I think that's all the Funkos in the box. So, on the back, you'll notice I've got three that are missing. I'm missing Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer, and Galactus. And I've seen some of them on Amazon, and I hope that... Uh, I'll be able to get those where they're kind of minty fresh, if you know what I mean. But I do need to order those. I've got some, I think I have some Amazon gift card money as well. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. And we've got a, something, oh, I know what those are. So we're going to show some more moderns. I know what these have to be. These magazine size ones. I know what those are, and I'm going to open those suckers up. And then at the bottom... The Golden Age. All right, where is it? The Golden Age. These are from MyComicShop.com, and I'll give you a little tip on some of their auctions. Put that over here. And this big old box here. I might put this in the garage because I can send some stuff to somebody in it. Okay, let's lay that kind of over there. Just in the way. Not too shabby. All right, let me put this, the Golden Age one over here. Let's open up some of these magazine sizes. How about it? All right, we got eight watching right now. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm going to open up these now. There's only one magazine size black label. Oh, hint, black label. There's only one that I'm actually currently reading and collecting. Stupid tape. Let's fold that in. I do love their shipping, but sometimes I get a little annoyed with the tape. 
Okay. Ooh, that's a beautiful cover. Well, those weirdos, they put that one in backwards. I don't have any more magazine mylars, so... Come on, tape. Always take that damn tape off, if you know what I mean. Let's put this in the right way. Pull it out a little bit, though. So I can kind of peel it from the backing board. Damn, they even put it on the wrong side. We talked about this on um, Andy's show on Thursday. So let's flip. Well, let's just take it all the way out. Jeez. Come on, my comic shop. You've been in business for a long time, people. All right, so they put the front of the book up against the non-glossy side. Now, there's the glossy side. We're going to fix it. But I love this one. This is the variant cover. And I can't read the dude's um, sig, but man, if you're a fan of westerns like me, you're going to love this one. I'm trying to get it back in this bag. It's a freaking tight fit. What do y'all think about like when you put stuff in, it's like a damn tight fit, and you're like, cram it in there, but you don't want to screw up the corners. So you kind of maybe just, what's up with that, you know? Come on. There we go. A little bit there. Little, are you going to hook me up a little? Come on. Are you going to give me that little slack there? There we go. There we go. Come to Papa. There. It's bag and board it the proper way. I got that tape on the side down there. No tape pull. No tape pull. Okay. There you go. Look at that. That's a cool ass cover. Western style. Okay. And I see that's totally the matte part there so this is issue two which i have not read i've read issue one that's the original cover right there of the question the death of vic sage storyline i don't know how many of these there's gonna be or if they're even uh, finished yet and there's a piece of crap on the front of this just gonna drive me nuts let me get that out of the bag how many times have you had that happen where something on the bag right and you're so anal about it you don't want anything on that cover. Oh, man. It's good stuff, though. All right. So we got the questions. Black Label Issue 2s. Very nice. Near mints. Good times. I'll put them in the magazine box here shortly. Put them there for now. Look at that, though. Let's see that again, man. Everyone loves that. Jonah Hex number one, 9.8. Like I said, on, it was an accident yesterday. I was going to do a, a Golden Age unboxing, right? And then I pulled this out. I'm like, well, hell, it's Jonah Hex, man. And let me give one big-ass shout-out to one of the legits, the legends in the community. I always, you know, the, the men that have more knowledge than me and the men who've had more life on this earth are always some of my favorite people and i want to give a big shout out to the dvc dr von chilla man one of the freaking best and dvc let me show you this man this question i normally don't do magazine sizes i do have a magazine box but i normally don't but man that's a damn blazer cover there look at that dude look at that six shooters man dude vic sage man he's my favorite i know montoya renee montoya she's cool and all but when you talk question, you talk Ditko, you talk Charlton, you talk, you know, Mr. A, you know, that, of course, went on to become Rorschach, you know, and all that great stuff, man. I mean, not Vic Sage became Rorschach, but, you know, the idea of, of, the, of the, the writings of Ayn Rand, for Ditko to be a big truth seeker in the Ayn Rand stuff, created Mr. A, of course, I learned that from Howler Mouse, but, you know, learning more about Ditko through the years, you know, where it's like, he likes that only seeing through black and white on these characters. All right, let's look at some moderns. Oh, damn, these books are old. God, these books are so old. Now, these are from... Th I want to say these are January's books, January 2020 books. I'm just going to kind of go through these quick because we're going to get to the Golden Age and talk about it, a little bit about it. So let's open the bag here. Fold the tape in on the big outer bag. 
I'm so glad they bag and board now. Back in the day, they never bagged and boarded. It was years ago, but they've been bagging and boarding their books for quite a long time now, which I like. I know it's a pain in the ass, but they do a great job. All right. Oh, okay, there it is. You know, I pulled this book yesterday, but I pulled the issue too, and I was telling you all about it. Um, it's in the... Uh, one of my long boxes there. You know, all, all the stuff that's not in any kind of order or need to be needs to be bagged is in, you know, the long box because I need to put it in poly and then I need to sort it. Let's see what else we got going on here. One second into a tight fit and I'm on the uh, on to an appropriate mile R word. Hell yeah, Blazer man. I've read issue one and it's excellent. It's gritty. It's crime. It's kind of noir. It's street level crime and it's awesome look at this one though i'm glad to get this this i have a crisis box so anything dc infinite crisis crisis on infinite earths i don't know i don't have any final crisis but i love these crisis books and i don't have all the original crisis on infinite earths i just get them i don't even think i have all 12 of them I probably just got some here and there, and they're all beaters, you know, nothing to ride home about. I usually read it digitally. I would like to get me a Crisis on Infinite Earths hardcover eventually, but this has that Felicity Smoke story I told you about yesterday. See, she's right here, and you get a story that wasn't in the CW's universe or, you know, the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths CW and the Arrow TV show, but you get a, a really good Felicity story that's kind of supposed to be going on behind the scenes if that's what i i take it to be i mean carson's read it seawood has read this so he he would be the one to know for sure all right i'm gonna move this one i, I pulled a golden age book out to kind of refresh y'all's memory on kind of what we're going after here Let's see what else we got wow beautiful cover i did not know i got the b cover on this whoa okay hmm Maybe this is a couple different books. Oh, my God. What is this all about? It's a blank cover. It's a Green Lantern blank cover, it looks like. This is... I know what this is. This I'm not going to open it up or anything, but this is a blank cover. When you pull the little piece of white paper off, it's a uh, Green Lantern Season 2, number one. So I've got Green Lantern Season 2, number one. Which was a kick-ass story. I love the Grant Morrison. I've loved Grant Morrison on his Green Lantern run. Get the story of the Young Guardians in this. I've already read this digitally. Very good story. I love that stuff. I love what they did with the Black Stars. His little Black Stars miniseries that came in between his Green Lantern run and the Season 2. Glad to get this series, Issue 12, so I can finally read it. I've not been reading this series at all. I've been saving it, but I've got a designated box for my Plastic Man stuff, my Freedom Fighter stuff, you know, all of those old school quality comics. You know, I got the old Freedom Fighters first appearance around here somewhere, the team where it was in that Justice League of America. I want to say 166, 167, or maybe I'm getting my FFs mixed up, but it was a... Uh, one of those issues, man, where they, they went to... It was supposed to be a crossover between the Earth 1 heroes and the Earth 2 heroes because they did that once a year after the big Flash 123 where Barry met Jay Garrick. But what happened was they went to a different Earth. Like, different groups went to, like, Earth X, and then they found out that the Nazis uh, ruled the Earth. And it goes back to that parallel earths different you know different universes you know like the show sliders or man in the high castle or any time where it's the same earth but it's in a parallel and there's differences you know i, I just love that stuff but anyway this is freedom fighters number 12 victory it looks like uncle sam won the battle so kick ass good for you bro would love to get his first appearance Oh, Ricky. What's up, Ricky? Howdy, Ricky. How are Julian? <laughs> That's one of my favorite voices to do is... What, what would he say? Decent. Or... Well, what would he do? He'd say, Hey, Ricky. Hey, Julian. Why don't you help me with your kitties today? Come on. 
kitties, hey, rub your belly. Oh, it was that he always liked his belly rubbed. Ricky and Julian. It's kind of got that Astro, Scooby-Doo, like, oh, that's nice. Or, uh, hey, George. <laughs> but, yeah, Bubbles is really cool. What, what a, I, I used to do a pretty good Bubbles but, because I always watch that show, but he was like, well, Ricky, <laughs> and then I love Conky. When it, whenever he did that little puppet, puppet Conky, the puppet was like, "Hi, Julian, I'm Conky. Looks like you're looking like Patrick Swayze today. You're gonna ride the Swayze train, Julian." <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. All right, you know. I've read this issue. This was Point of Origin Part 5. I read this digitally as well. And this was a great deal where they recreated, you know, their first ship that got struck down by cosmic rays. Well, Reed found the screw-up, and he fixed the ship, and he made, like, whatever the ship's name was, number two. And then they did their original mission. And their original mission landed on another planet. And the planet was a, a group. God, I can't remember their name. But anyway, it was a kick-ass storyline. And that's where Human Torch met his current wife, uh, Sky, which she's right in the corner here. And it was a kick-ass story. And I've really been loving this. This has been by uh, Dan Slott. The art um, is really good. It switches back and forth, you know, between different Marvel artists, you know, in-house artists. It's not like... Art Adams or Neil Adams or Gomez Adams. <laughs> that fool would probably color it and draw it upside down. But anyways, that was a kick-ass storyline, point of origin. Currently, um, they're not done with issue 21, but they're going to be coming out with that one pretty soon. They're kind of focusing on the Empire, and Neil Adams has a Fantastic Four Empire story that's his first illustrated Fantastic Four book, which I believe I ordered two of those, cover A and cover B. I always try to get cover A and cover B of Fantastic Four. There's a lot of variants I'm just probably not going to be able to get because they're too expensive. Shazam 10, I read this too digitally. But you may say, well, if you're reading these digitally, why are you getting them in paper form or in floppy form? Well, the thing is, Freedom Fighters, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan especially, and I'm talking Hal Jordan from the Jeff Johns original run, not the older stuff with the white hair Hal Jordan and all that. I mean, that would be cool to get one of these days, but it's not really a focal point. It's just that Jeff Johns stuff and on is, is my favorite Green Lantern stuff. I'm sure I would get into some other Green Lantern. And then if someone gives me Green Lantern, they're going into the Green Lantern box. But, of course, this character here. You know, I'm wearing the shirt. You know, love it, the OG Captain Marvel. This is C.C. Batson down here, and Billy gave some of his powers to his biological father. And, then of course, he does have to make an, some important decisions. I think, you know, I love Jeff Johns on this story. I'm kind of pissed that the story has been delayed many times. Gary Frank, I miss Gary Frank, but he was doing Doomsday Clock with Jeff Johns. But this story has been delayed so many times because Jeff Johns has other projects, like that kick-ass Stargirl show. That's freaking awesome. I always get cover B of Shazam as well. Not too bad. Um, I don't know. That face, the everything else looks great. And it looks kind of like watercolored. But I don't know. The face looks like... I don't know, it looks like he's staring down at something. I don't know, it looks kind of weird. But Doug Eaglesham, dude, that's good shit right there, man. That's good shit. Those are going to look good in Mylar. Next up, Farmhand, number 13. I do, not, I do not know where I am in this series. I believe this series will go to 30 issues. I think that's the plan that Rob Guillory has laid out. So I don't really want to start with the singles. I'll probably wait till they're all finished, and then I'll read the singles. Most likely they'll do deluxe hardcovers like they've done with a lot of the image books that I really love. I love Chu, uh, John Lehman, and Rob Guillory. I also love Paper Girls by Brian K. Vaughn. Saga, I don't have any Saga hardcovers. I've got all the singles so far, but I don't have any of those hardcovers. I don't know if I'll get them. The thing is people i'm leaning a lot toward 
hard hard covers and trades and things like that because I prefer to read that way. But at the same time, the trades and hard covers take up space. Space that I don't have because this is the only room I could store the stuff in and it's getting already pretty crowded in here. So most likely I'll be reading them digitally. But I, I got to have the singles because I'm a big fan. Just awesome. Guillory, man, is just killing it on farmhand. Then, there we go. There it is. Is that the end of that? Is that the end of the witching hour? I'm not very sure, but that's kick-ass. And, you know, the problem is also, with COVID-19, these February books really aren't that old. Because I just opened a Justice League Dark 21. So that would be... This was January, so February, March. Yeah, I opened up March, early March. And I finally got that about a week ago, maybe a week or two ago. That's a nice Justice League Dark cover. On Justice League Dark, I love the JLD. I do not get the cover Bs. I usually just stick to the cover As. Uh, some virgin cover Bs, I just don't get. I, I'm not into them. I mean, the arts really kick ass. You know, and Justice League Dark is awesome, but it's not Shazam awesome. But Justice League Dark is a series. I collected all of Volume 1. It was a phenomenal read. And Volume 2 is a phenomenal read. I read up to the Justice League Dark and the Wonder Woman crossover story, which was called The Witching Hour. And I know I'm repeating some of the stuff I said yesterday, so we won't spend too much time on that. But after Witching Hour, I didn't read any Justice League Dark. I'm not a big fan when they do these damn crossovers, because then I got to go buy the Wonder Womans, but I didn't. I read them digitally, so that was cool. Was able to do it that way. And this miniseries was freaking phenomenal. And this was a uh, Liam Sharp cover, but on the inside, it was some different artwork. And this was Green Lantern and the Black Stars issue three. The final issue of the Black Stars were how Jordan pulled the secrets on old Elizabeth, the damn vampire bitch. You know, the cosmic vampire bitch is what I call her. But uh, the Black Stars, great freaking run. Really reminded me of a Buck Rogers, Han Solo style Hal Jordan. Kind of conniving on his own, but you know why he was doing it? Because he pulled a fast one on her at the end. So if you ever have the DC Universe app and you want to read the Green Lantern Black Stars, it was a kick-ass little filler. It, like I said, it came in between uh, Liam Sharp and Grant Morrison's first Green Lantern run, which was freaking phenomenal. If you haven't read that, read Grant Morrison, because like Louis Ponce, he is a freaking truth seeker. He throws in Easter eggs, and, and it's really those kind of Easter eggs where you have to have that power to look five seconds into the future. Not only five seconds into the future, but look in between the lines of the digital reality that we're currently in. But dude, Grant Morrison, man, one of my faves. All right. Let's check the chat, and then we're finally here. The Golden Age unboxing. If you want, check out the Fantastic Four Funkos unboxed. I didn't get all of them, and I didn't get the variants because the variants are in other boxes, but the other ones I need, Silver Surfer, Galactus, Doctor Doom. I don't know. MyComicShop.com never did get those, so I don't know what happened there. Big epic fail, most likely by Diamond, even though Buddy Saunders loves Diamond, and, you know, the thing about it is, uh, West Coast got the um, discount comic book service deal. You know their little public uh, or their little distributor, and then the East Coast got New York. Buddy's kind of just got screwed basically, so he has to probably use one or the other. But this has happened before in history. Buddy Saunders said in his uh, Buddy Banner's email, Buddy Buddy's banter uh, that I get every um, usually about once a week. I read his little column that he sends out. It's a great guy, old school Texan. But he said that most likely it'll all, you know, the Diamond will get the stuff back. DC will work a deal with Diamond. So I'm excited about that. Because, dude, I only pick up one Marvel book. I just get Fantastic Four, you know, and any other kind of Fantastic Four goodness. All right, let's open up this Golden Age. And before we open it, yesterday we talked a little bit about a character that's in this book. You know, this is Wiz Comics 25 from December 1941. Cover date, 12, five days after Pearl Harbor. 
And my main man, Dr. Von Chile, had a good, good, good friend that was in the old war. And I hate that. My damn brain cut off there. Damn it, DVC. Your best friend, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. I know you visited his, uh, his grave a while back. Uh, how can I forget that, man? He was so sweet. Loved him some Beatles, too, I believe. I know DVC loves some Beatles. This sucks. I cannot remember your good friend's name. Those are some of my favorite videos because he was living history, which I really love. All right, Dr. Von Schill, let me know your buddy, your friend's name, man, because it's killing me. I can't, I'm so sorry. I, no disrespect. I can't. Ellis! Ellis Lincoln Conrad. Ellis was his name. I was thinking it ended with an S, but I was like, damn it. Because DBC had a just most beloved friendship with his friend Ellis, who was quite older than him. But, man, they were running buddies, dude. They did everything together. Hung out, you know, chilled, watched movies. Of course, he likes those good movies, those OG movies, not the crap that's today where it's a bunch of remakes. Although some remakes are good. You know, that Fantastic Four remake. Woo you know, I am a Fantastic Four purist and everything, but for what the movie was, like, try to, like, say, this Fantastic Four was on a parallel Earth, I thought it was okay. I mean, I love the multi-dimensional travel. I love that teleportation thing. They thought they were teleporting, but it was right, really like they were multi-dimensionally traveling. I thought that was actually pretty cool. So, But anyway, this is uh, Captain Marvel <laughs> Jr.'s uh, first appearance. But this is known as the first continued story in different titles. And I want to believe that's from Fawcett Publications. However... Being that Wiz Comics, Action Comics, Detective Comics, uh, anything timely did, this may be the very first continued Golden Age story in different titles. And, of course, this is part two. And the new labels they have, it'll say this is part two of the Captain Marvel Jr. Uh, trilogy story or origin story. But the thing was, in Master Comics 21, you didn't get any... Maybe you maybe got some ad or something at the end, but you didn't really get, and maybe not. I, I need to look at, I would have to see a facsimile edition of that. But you didn't get the first origin and first appearance of Captain Marvel Jr. Freddie Freeman. You got the first appearance of Captain Nazi, and he was a badass dude, man. Um, so we'll see. And then part three, of course, is Master Comics issue 22. The first cover appearance of Captain Marvel Jr., so in this box here, I do love their graded uh, comic book boxes, but in this box, we're either going to get a Master Comics 21 or we're going to get a Master Comics 22. Master Comics 21, notably, you know, being first appearance of Captain Nazi, but another thing was it was Bullet Man's uh, comic book where he kicked ass, and Bullet Girl, too, was in there quite a bit. And Bullet Man was having a showdown with Captain Nazi. Of course, he had a little help from this guy, you know, Captain Marvel. And they beat his ass, you know, whipped his ass a little bit. They're still fighting him in this story here. You know, and of course in this story, uh, Captain Marvel knocks his ass into this lake. And this old grandpa uses an oar to pull up Captain Nazi out of the water. And he's fishing with his uh, is it grandson or something. <laughs> I think it's his grandson. I don't want to say dad because the man was old. And so Captain Nazi pulls himself aboard, beats that old man um, with the, 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 the oar and just throws him out to sea. So he ends up dying. And then young Freddie Freeman, he gets hit in the leg and he becomes crippled. And the way that Captain Marvel, you know, rushed in, took him to the doctor. The doctor said he's not going to live long in his current state. Billy takes him to the Rock of Eternity, asks Shazam what to do. Shazam the wizard says, you know, have this kid uh, speak your name. And so whenever Freddie Freeman says, Captain Marvel, he turns into Captain Marvel Jr. And all is well again. So, man, this is a kick-ass book. I normally don't talk about what I paid for books, but I did get this for three, 
Three figures. Yeah. So I got it at a nice key issue price. Oh my god. This feels really nice. I haven't I haven't Oh, that's why this is my first ever CBCS thicker case. Most of the Golden Age books, if you take a look, wow, that Jonah Hex is in a thick case too, but these are thicker uh, cases than your normal, just regular thinner uh, slabs. They're thicker, so some of you may not have or seen a thicker uh, Golden Age. Why this one's in a thicker case, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe these aren't thicker. I don't know. They just feel thick. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, dude. I've, I've got so many slabs, I don't even know what the hell I have. All right, so let's take this out of the case so you can see it. Ta-da! A Master Comics number 22. Let's see what we got on here. From the personal collection of Frank Bruner. Some of you may have heard of Frank Bruner. That's a nice looking book right there. Of course, there you got Bullet Man and Captain Nazi. You got some people in Pearl here. Could be a bondage cover. She's kind of strapped in with some leather. This old bastard, you know who he looks like. It looks like I don't know who that is. It kind of looks like a weight off game getting punched. <laughs> this is a, a Mac Rayboy cover. We've got Jordan's 510 East 5th Back Issue Magazines. So I knew it had that on there. I mean, that just was so cool because you get a little bit of that history. But this is a beautiful book. Now, it looks like we've got cover and art. Mac Rayboy, one of the golden age, one of the best golden age guys at Fawcett. We got art by George Tuska, Phil Bard, Howard Purcell, Ralph Carlson. Story by Bill Wolfolk and Otto Binder. And I probably will send this in. You know, you got a little bit of that kind of action going on. You know, they have CBCS has these new cases these days, so I'll probably put this, maybe send this off to get recased. After I have some other CBS stuff I want to get recased too. But that's a nice 2.5. Has some discoloration up here at the top. Like maybe he put a stack of books like here. And then this maybe got some dirty or discoloration. I'm wondering if this could uh, use a, a press and cleaning. You know, sometimes it looks like the staples are barely hanging in there. So most likely I probably wouldn't get it pressed and cleaned. Looks good enough for me. Nice CBCS 2.5, dudes. This is so freaking awesome. I'm so glad. This is basically third appearance of Captain Nazi. Frank Bruner. Yeah, I may get this recase, though, because the case sounds seems kind of flimsy, you know, on the sides. But Frank Bruner, man, no doubt Frank Bruner in the house. That's kind of cool. You can tell there's some rolling on the book because you can see the pages there but the dude put jordan's he put his like store name on there i think that's freaking kind of cool jordan's 510 and see if i get that yeah i don't think this would be a good candidate for pressing has kind of a little piece missing up there a little tear there not for sissies you know low grade is not for sissies little prima donnas you know, prima donnas may have to have some nine eights, you know. But, dude, when you're talking golden age, when you're talking that gold, when you got that gold, you take it like you can see it. And, man, with great lighting, man, this thing fucking pops. Sorry for my French. I normally don't like to cuss very much. But, fuck yeah, <laughs> it looks damn good in my book. So this is part three. Part 3 Trilogy Origin of Captain Marvel Jr. Captain Nazi Appearance. Yeah, bondage cover. First Captain Marvel Jr. cover. So CBCS has some nice notes, man. Jordan did it right, man. I'm sure somebody maybe in the 50s possibly. Because you can tell it was read by a kid. I mean, look how well-loved that book was. But 
maybe uh, Jordan somehow got a hold of this. I'll have to look up Jordan's 510th East 5th back issue magazines. See if I can do some history homework on there. But that's a beautiful Mac Rayboy cover. You got Bullet Man and Captain Nazi in the background. You got the bondage cover, I believe. I don't know if that's Hitler or not. He's just wearing a suit and he looks creepy and needs to go to the dentist or whatnot. But that's all right. That's history, man. That's freaking history. So that begs the question. I did put a big time offer in to get a Master Comics 21. I put an offer in uh, from a Heritage Auction uh, person that had the make an offer on Heritage Auction. Put a pretty sizable offer in. I ain't going to lie. Four figures. You know, sometimes legend knows how to do it. But we'll see. I don't know. I just don't know if I'll ever able, be able to get Master Comics 21. I mean, that first Captain Nazi. If, if I could go back in time, I would have grabbed it in 2013 when I grabbed Wiz 2 and FF1 and FF48 and a lot of the other of my keys that I have. But that's a beautiful freaking book. Of course, like the story of Wiz Comics... Wiz Comics had multiple stories inside it of different Fawcett characters. And like Wiz, see, this guy got so hot, he was the first out of the big three. Well, Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman. Cap always had his own, you know, Captain America comics. But the big three, action comics. Superman got hot, so they created Superman. Detective Comics. Detective, Batman got hot, so they made Batman number one, 1940, I believe. February? I don't know. Uh, what was another one? Uh, she First appearance, Barrett, you hit me You hit me up on this. All-Star... Is it Squadron? All-Star Squadron, issue eight? Wonder Woman's first appearance, but then she was in Sensational Comics, but she was so hot she got Wonder Woman comics. So this was the first guy to do it. He was so hot, they gave him his own title, Captain Marvel Adventures. Number one selling superhero, Captain Marvel. Outsold Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Cap. And the reason he did, because a lot of kids could identify with Billy Batson. And they would think what it would be like if they could say a magic word and a lightning would strike down. And then they would become this Captain Marvel. Very freaking cool. Of course... Weird Western Tales was a very hot book for this guy. So he got his own solo series, Jonah Hex number one. So with this bad boy here, when you get you yourself a nice slab like this. And you know, I do like these bags better. They're actually sealable bags. They're more clear, unlike CGC's shitty bags. But when you have these... This is what you do. When you have these, I'm going to show you what you do real quick. You know, back in the day, you know, when everyone wasn't trying to get over. And I'm going to give some shout-outs because I saw John's Comics with Kids. Back in the day, before everyone was trying to get over, sometimes we'd just do a hangout. you just bag and board comics. You know, the simple times. You know, we weren't trying to get famous on YouTube. We weren't trying to earn a lot of money or anything. See that guy up there? $2 Super Chat, man. That's Drew Manchu, man. But we weren't trying to make a lot of money on, on YouTube. We were just showing our passion, things we were passionate about. And we just sit around and we bag and board. Damn, this, CG, this, this case is thick. <laughs> but not thick enough for E. Gerber. Put this thing... Fold this tab back. Fold it down. Just like that. I like these CBCS cases. These aren't the brand new ones, but I think they're pretty good. And I am eager to see about these new CBCS cases. So I've got some CBCS books I wouldn't mind re-slabbing. Most likely my golden age ones, like the Three Stooges number one. This book, of course. And see what they look like. But look at that, man. 
That's pristine, dude. It doesn't get any more pristine than that. This is a 2.5 creamed off-white January 1942 Master Comics issue 22 from some dude named Frank Bruner. Okay, so maybe Frank Bruner bought it off Jordan's five and dime over here. Is that what that means? <laughs> Just five and ten, five and dime, whatever. Damn it! There's a little piece in the damn Mylar bag. See that little white piece there? Oh, the anal of me. I got to get it out of there. All right, while I'm doing that, let's check the chat. And, of course, we'll use some new tape. Actually, I may leave the tape on there. Can we get that out of the bag? Let's see. No, come on. Come on. Ah, oh, man, don't be stuck in the bag. It's going to be stuck in the bag. Okay. Hey, at least with slabs, you don't get tape pull. Come on, you little white piece of crap. There we go. Got it out of there. Let's open the bag back up. Remove the tape. I use scotch tape, matte finish, when I bag and board. Let's check the chat real quick while I'm filling with the tape. Hey, Murph, what's going on, bro? Yeah, dude, Dr. Von Chilla. It is coming out. I'm pretty sure I ordered it last month, but you might still be able to order it for this month's previews if your comic store does the um, previews every couple. Or, you know, you have the two. Yeah, conky. <laughs> it's conky. Hey, IWK83, what's going on, dude? Great to see you in the chat this Sunday morning. Oh, yes, Mr. Gretzky says, I heard Shazam was canceled come September. You know, and it's one of those things, if Jeff Johns isn't doing it, it's just going to fall to the wayside. And plus, with DC getting rid of old Didio and DC making a lot of changes, it's all about money, it's all about movies, it's all about entertainment. And I don't think that Time Warner has any love for the DC comics. So they're going to have your Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, but Freedom Fighters, Shazam, stuff like that, they're not going to have. Sweet 115. Family is great. That's good. It's good to see Amazing Murphinator. I don't have a Golden Age yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, Golden Age Lone Ranger. That'd be freaking awesome. The oldest Captain Marvel book I ever owned was Captain Marvel Adventures number eight with the classic Forward America cover. Sold it to Nick Cage via a phone call per my CB Guide ad. You know, he is a big-time collector. Remember, I heard he got his Action Comics number one stolen. Gretzky. Yeah, Gretzky. I was talking about you and Galvin last night. I went back and watched that video, dude. Dude, it was awesome. I'm sorry I wasn't awake. Me and Chad, Carson, and Drew, comic horrors, we were playing wrestling, WWE 2K19. And we were also playing Red Dead Redemption. We formed a posse on there. I got a four of a kind. We all played poker. <laughs> I was playing stupid, right? Because none of them know I know how to play poker. So I was playing kind of stupid, right? And I, was, I had two, two number twos, right? I think it was a two of hearts, two of diamonds. And they were you know, did a small bid or bet. And then I was like, I got to take a piss. Let's throw in 10. So I threw in 10 cents. Like I said, this is the old West when pennies meant something. You know, 10 cents, you can buy you an action. Number one. There we go. Good shit. But what was cool was uh, the third card came down. First card of the, that they had in there was a two two of spades or something and then that two of clubs came up so i'm sitting on a freaking four of a kind <laughs> and from that point on i just kept doing these 10 cent bets and then when we got to about that last was it the river the whatever the turn whatever the bullshit is when we got to that last fifth card dude i just started like i'd raise another 20 or something cents and they would raise, and then they would all raise, and then I would do a re-raise, and I'd, like, max it out, like, whatever I could max it out at. Got my, got me some money. <laughs> Four of a kind. Damn. I won, like, $3. 
you know, the buy-in was about five, so I had about eight bucks, and then Drew won a three of a kind. Kicked my ass on a two pair. I had a two pair. He had a three of a kind, and then he he came out positive. I came out positive. Carson lost about three fifty, three dollars and fifty cents. Poor old Seawood won nine. He didn't read that dotted line. Don't you come to the show if you don't know how to play poker because that's that's my role, four of a kind. Man, just great to see. I bought a CBCS 4.5 Incredible Hulk off eBay. Yeah, DVC, now it's ready for display. Issue 115, you got to get that little fleck out of there. Yeah, no seam to stun. I know, I hate that kind of stuff, man. And it's that static electricity. And my kids have been eating in here somehow. Because I see those look like a little shit fly. There's one of them little shit flies that get near the lamp. Those piss me off, too. Tree 50. Yeah, I like that episode. Jeff G and you were killing it. Matt was talking, getting about, he wants to get the first appearance of Cheryl Blossom. First appearance, of course, of the vampire Veronica. Vampronica or whatever. And, of course, uh, Gretzky wants to get the first appearance of Kevin. Do you have the first appearance of Kevin? Dude, I bet that book's a damn spec book, you know. Because these are the times of acceptance in the world. You know, stuff like that. Oh, man. Let me show you all the rewind. I'm not going to show you the Funkos. You'll have to watch that. But yesterday I made a blunder, everybody. I had a Golden Age video. And when I got, I showed my moderns. Oh, I got this Doomsday Clock slipcase with hardcover book two and hardcover book one, and they look great in the uh, slipcase. It's in my bedroom. It's going to be getting read very soon. It's Jeff Johns, Gary Frank. I love Gary Frank's art. I don't know what Drew Manchu talking about. He don't like that Gary Frank. But anyway, after I showed my moderns from last month, and I showed the Doomsday Clock, volume one, volume two, hardcover with slipcase, I was going to get this Golden Age book. And I opened up, and it wasn't Golden Age. It was Jonah Hex. Jonah Hex, number one. 9.8. There's that shit fly again. You little bastard. Get away. They call them fruit flies, but I call them shit flies. That little bastard going between my monitor bezel. He better not. Oh, looky here. We got a super chat from Cat Wren Figures. Let me refresh this here. Why isn't my stuff refreshing? Look at that, though. There it is. Cat Wren figures. Happy belated fourth, my dear. Happy belated fourth to you. I'm sorry I did not make the Friday night show. You know, I just needed a little night off. You know, I've been running hard on Comic Core every Friday night. We do the round table. Last, uh, last Friday, it went off the rails. They had to set that video to private. <laughs> It was so crazy. But, um, yeah, that Jonah Hex, so my bad. Today's Golden Age book is this one here. Master Comics 22. First, Mac, well, first, Captain Marvel Jr. on the cover in part three of the Captain Marvel Jr. trilogy. And, of course, we know Captain Marvel Jr.'s first appearance was in there. So, very freaking awesome now i need to get master comics 21 and then i'll have that first part of the so-called trilogy so man totally pumped to have that um in the collection like i said i got it at a really good deal and like i said i don't care if it was low grade because some of these golden age books you can only find them in low grade you know reasonably priced you know what i mean i'm not going to pay too much for that issue opposed to the first captain nazi issue now i, I you know I'm a, I'm, i put a good offer for that so we'll see if the dude wants to reciprocate or uh raise the offer or whatnot 20 gk's leonard a man with 20 grandkids good to see you in here my friend long time no see does legend have the drew gimmick where we can be best friends and do karate in the garage no i just have basic stream labs dude um I've got that blue color matching the blue color of my, my color scheme. This is, I use OBS uh, to do my live shows. Let me take this off. My I'm, This is getting hot as hell in here. Oh, man. Whew. Damn, wearing a beanie in the summer, man. I'm going to mess you up. 
but I uh, use OBS, and it's very good. It's OBS version 25.0.8, 64-bit, and it's doing me good, man. It's doing me good. Love me some uh, of this stuff here. Stream Yard is what a lot of people use in the comic book community. It's very cool. But I can do certain things with this. You know, I can do, I can turn my chat off. Go to the black background. I always love fading out to black. Please stand by. It's always classic. You know, when I play music at the end of the video, I like to play usually music and I'll run that. I call this the credits. This is Xbox One, but there's no Xbox One on. This is monitor capture. That's my secondary monitor. Hey, Jenny Linzel. Hey, Jenny. Thanks for subscribing. Intermission. This is an intermission where that chat there, I have to put the link in for that. For some reason, it doesn't carry over. But let's see if we could do that real quick. Let's look at in intermission chat. See what it looks like. And where it says intermission. Hey, look at there. Ten dollars. Oh, look at you, man. Get yourself another pop. Yeah, comic book G spot. Another pop. Man, thanks, Robert Galvin. I appreciate that. And since you said pop, let me show one of the ones that I got. Like I said before, check this out on the rewind. There it is. Comic book G-Spot. Thanks, Robert, man. That's very nice of you. I got that one. I got a lot of Fantastic Four pops in today, too, so check that out on the rewind. And this little shit fly is pissing me off, flying on my monitor over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the, what is it? I think it's vinegar gimmick. Put a little vinegar in a little dish. And put it over the lamp area, and then all the shit flies will fly into that. Only problem is, if I have a little kid that gets kind of, he's going to be getting into my shit, he'll probably knock the vinegar over, and then all that crap gets on my monitors and ruins my whole setup here. So I don't want to do that. Benji Grimm. Here's a blast from the past. We got Miss Hustle in the house. Good to see you, Miss Hustle. How you doing today? One of the best. Check her out. So let me go ahead and get this thing finished up here. And we're going to talk about what we're going to be doing in the future on The Great Legend Show. We're going to be talking about some gaming. we got a one quarter, one life coming up very soon. And we're going to have our next Great Chef Show. So make sure you pay attention. And we'll let you know when that brand new content comes to the great legend show and another great thing if you want more come check out the legend on the comic core every friday night nine central ten eastern we have a round table discussion like no other and we also talk about all of the things that we've been doing in our pop culture lives whether it be did we get any new purchases any keys what was our moderns what was our picks of the week what did we enjoy reading? That kind of stuff. So make sure you check out Friday night on the Comic Core. You'll be glad you did. And fans, thank you so much for watching the show tonight. Uh, Kat Wren, thank you so much for that $2 super chat. And man, Robert Galvin with the $10 super chat. Hell yeah. Thank you so much, too. And we'll see you next time here on The Great Legend Show. Fans, this is The Great Legend. Damn, two days in a row. Saying peace out, God bless.